Hey, what's up everybody? It's Nick here from Mind Body One, and today we're gonna to talk about the Stroop Effect. Now, this is something in cognitive psychology, and it's actually one of the most cited research papers in psychology. And I've been told many times that it's a filter on TikTok. I've seen this, I wasn't aware of it. So it's just showing how big the Stroop Effect really is. It's almost been a hundred years since the first paper was published on it in America here by John Ridley Stroop. And you're like, who is that? Yes, the Stroop effect is actually named after a real person. So let's talk about what it is, how it came to be, and why this is important. I use this in my practice all the time with many different tasks. There's different varieties of the Stroop effect. There's ways that I use it in application with my athletes, with my military, with my students, whoever it may be. So let's get into the importance and the relevance of the Stroop effect. Now, first off, who was John Ridley Stroop? Now, he was born in Tennessee in Murfreesboro in 1897, and he lived to 1973. So you can see he came up around the turn of the century. This also was a prime time for psychology in general. Now we know about people like Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud, which are considered one of the biggest psychologists. You usually think of their names when you think psychology, especially the history of it. But he was in a different lane. He was more experimental and educational psychology. Now, psychoanalytics was the whole rage back then, but he was looking into how we actually process information. Now, he was kind of sickly when he was growing up, and during that time, the world, in America especially, was very rural, and he couldn't really help the family work in the farms, so he kind of stayed back, but he was avidly learning, and he was a standout student. He would go on to be first in class in high school as well as college, and then he would go on to publish the eponymous Stroop Effect research paper. So that's how it all came to be. Now, for those who may not be following along, what is the Stroop Effect? So let's go back to the original experiment in 1935, studies of interference in serial verbal reactions. Now, the goal was to see if there was a difference in processing speed when the word and the ink color were either neutral congruent or incongruent. So these are the different conditions that he had for his first experiment. Now the neutral condition, this is when the ink was black and they just read the word, red, green, yellow, orange, purple, whatever it is, based off of just what it said. So there's no difference in the color of the ink. It was all black. That's why it was a neutral condition. They would read each word and finish the list as fast as possible. Now, the second condition was the incongruent condition. This is when the color of the ink did not match the actual word. For example, red written in blue, blue written in yellow, green written in purple. So the brain had to process what the color of the ink was and say that and not the actual word itself. Now, the third condition was the congruent. So it was different squares that were red, blue, green, purple, brown, so forth. So you had to say the color of the actual squares. So this way the brain is in line with what it's seeing. So red is red, blue is blue and so forth. So he did these three conditions. Now he found that there was differences in processing. Surprise, surprise, right? And if you've ever done the Stroop effect, you can see it can be kind of challenging. You can't really beat it. It's just a matter of how do you adapt, but we'll get into that soon. So after this was published, they started seeing more and more ways to implement this. Now, crazy enough, he would only do two more articles regarding the Stroop effect before he would go on with his life and then become an advisor as well as a chairman of the psychology department of his college. So he didn't really make this his seminal work, but it definitely is what we today remember him as. So why should we care about any of this? Now, I personally say you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Typically people see the Stroop effect as a fun game. Some brain training apps use it, like I said, with the TikTok filter, so it's very popular. But it goes deeper than that because if you're able to process efficiently, it shows a lot on how your cognitive abilities work. So this is a structured way to actually train your brain. A lot of people talk about brain training and it usually regards something like crossword puzzles, uh, word searches, things like that. And those are great, but this is a structured, systematic and heavily researched way to know how effectively you're processing. Now, it works certain regions of the brain. We'll get into that as well. So this is a way we can do it in a systematic manner. Now, also, I personally, with my company, with Mind Body One, we look at this as a way to assess someone in real time, their adaptability. 
because a lot of times people ask me, what is the purpose of this type of training in any regard, let alone the Stroop effect? And I always tell them there's many ways to go about that. But the biggest one we do here at Mind Body One, which makes us unique from most other companies who call themselves mental performance or brain training companies, is that we're not just looking at the cognitive scores, processing times, variance, things of that nature. It matters. But we want to see how they adapt. Because when you change the variables of said tasks, for example, the Stroop effect, there's different versions. There's the congruent Stroop effect when we're going for the color itself, but they don't match. So we're trying to call the word instead of the color. So that changes things up a little bit. Or we could do something where it requires different tasks at once, but they still have to process the Stroop effect. So there's ways to change it up. We wanna see how their scores and times differ as well as just their straight out processing. Cause now we know, hmm, does duration make them do better or worse? Does the type of variables thrown at them while they're doing the Stroop effect make them better or worse? And we can see this. So it's a great way to give that kind of intervention. And one of the biggest points too, since I have a background in sport and performance psychology, a lot of people that use our Mind Body One methods are either in the psychological skills world with sports psychology, performance psychology, therapists, or they're more so in the cognitive, applied cognitive sciences where they're doing these types of tests. But wherever you may fall on this spectrum, this is beautiful because a lot of times when people do mental skills training, how to think more efficiently, be less emotional and reactive, less worry, anxiety, things of that nature. There's a lot of interventions that sport and performance psychologists will use and they would want their clientele to use it in real time in their performances, whether it be a sport, business, uh, military, the list really goes on. But what better way to apply those methods and really try them out while doing some type of task that makes you have to think quickly and efficiently under pressure. So that's where this really comes in because if I work on uh, thought stopping and not be able to worry in real time, I can do that while doing this troop task because guess what? Your brain's under cognitive load and now you have to make decisions. And now I can also see if I can keep calm and test these strategies out in real time and get the kinks out now versus the actual performance. So these are big reasons why I love to use the Stroop Effect and other cognitive tasks. Now, we look at this from a different standpoint. I like to use analogies. Your dog on a leash. So this goes more into, okay, we get that Stroop Effect challenges our ability to process information and we have to inhibit it to make the right decision. But what does that really mean in a deeper sense? So I use the analogy, your dog on a leash, because we can think about a dog, for example, their man's best friend, but sometimes they can be rambunctious, and it's hard to control them, but they're great animals. But sometimes you have to pull on the leash to say, hey, calm down so they can get in line. And then when they do what you need them to do, what do you usually do after that? You reward them, you give them a treat, or you give them a good boy and pet them or all of the above. So that's where I'm taking this with the Stroop effect because it's just really a feedback system to work on these behaviors. Like I said, adaptability. So now we can see how in real time, our brain does these things. So let's talk about three different parts of the brain. We won't get too deep into the neuroanatomy, but let's talk about the PFC, the ACC, and the VTA. Now, the PFC, this is the prefrontal cortex. The role here we want is goal planning, setting out what is the task at hand? What are the rules? What are the parameters? What needs to happen so we can say we were successful in this action? Now, the anterior cingulate cortex, or the ACC, this is error detection. Are we doing what's right? Do we need to change anything up? If it's the Stroop effect, if you see the word red written in green and you quick to say, you gotta stop yourself. Nope, that's not what we plan to do. We're planning to say the color of the ink, not the word. So the ACC is helping say process. No, change that, say green, not red. Even though it's written that way, you have to have that ability to stop it. Now, the last part we're talking about is the VTA or the ventral tegmental area. This is the reward system. People talk about dopamine all the time, and this sometimes gets misconstrued simply as reward or pleasure, but it's more so of saying reinforcing the behavior. So it's not that it feels good, it's that it's telling us we did something right, you need to repeat it. Or on the other side, you need to avert what was done. So if you did it wrong and you said red when you were supposed to say green because the ink color was green, so your brain has to tell you, hey, that's not what we wanted, go back, Plan it out again, what we're supposed to do, remind yourself, and in real time, you detect the error and get it right. And then it says, okay, good job. Now we need to repeat the behavior. It's really a motivating factor to repeat behaviors that lead to favorable outcomes. Now, in a general sense, you think you're just playing a game, but you're training your brain from a physiological aspect to be able to receive this information and repeat it over and over. Just kind of like you would do with a muscle. You can't do one push up and say, hey, I'm in shape. 
or you can't do one squat and say you're strong your legs are building no you have to do repetitions you have to do sets that's called volume and fitness but it's the same way in cognitive and mental training the more repetitions the more you rewire your brain and this is what's going on in real time when you're doing the drill and you're physically making your brain more efficient at detecting these errors repeating the process so while it looks like you're playing a game or it's fun cool you want that but you're also teaching your brain how to pick up on things and in real time handle the stressor perceived or real and do it again efficiently or fix it if it doesn't go as planned now this was a lot of information jam-packed in one video but the stroop effect has so many different aspects not just this way there's a numerical stroop there's the emotional stroop and we're not going to get into that too much right now there's also different tests i do with my methods you can check those out on other videos but the whole point of this is to learn where this comes from what it's about so you can get your mind right so if you like this video on the stroop effect make sure you check out this video that i go more in depth of the stroop effect different aspects of it different types of parameters that lead to why we mess up and process incorrectly so if you like this go check that out so once again guys thanks for tuning in and get your mind right